This conference will now be recorded. Okay, I want to welcome everybody to ANCAN Advanced uh, Prostate Cancer uh, Group Meeting. Uh, John, I missed you, John Ivory, I'm sorry. Did, did you need some no, time you tonight? Um, actually, I said no, but I'll take, uh, I'll take 10 seconds to do a public service announcement. Okay. All right. So this is, I want to welcome everybody. The first thing I'd like to do on behalf of all of us is thank everybody who attended last night's memorial for Jake. As many of you know, Jake was really a major part of this group and he will be missed if only because nobody's around to, to mute people. Um, and last night we did have, I think the family really appreciated what we did for them. I, I, I personally was touched by everything that was said about Jake and, and clearly we all miss him. And so I wanna thank you, everybody who attended. Uh, Rick, would you like to add to that? Not only that we had somewhere a maximum of attendance somewhere in the 50s and that's just fantastic and i'm so grateful to all of you who who attended and those who didn't um it'll get uh edited and it'll get posted um it may take john tysberg a little while to do it but it will happen and you'll all be able to share in in what happened but thank you those who who arrived okay uh the other uh the other announcement i'd like to make is as you many of know uh last week was the annual asco gu cancer meeting in san francisco when you saw i hope you saw what i wrote in the preamble that i'm afraid i was the only one of our group that attended uh but i was trying am i wrong is anybody else go ben did you go no answer Herb, I, I tried unsuccessfully to register and i even emailed their support group they never even responded back to me so sorry but i, I do appreciate you sending me the uh, links to the abstracts Right. So what I can do, Len, I can do more for you. I have downloads of a lot of stuff that I'm going to want to share with you. So, but at any rate, at some point in the future, uh, I I will try to organize a session at which I can tell you what I thought was exciting about the meeting. I, as you all know, I wrote that I was pretty excited about a lot of the stuff that was presented at this meeting, and I would like to have a more formal I don't want to take, we can't take up time tonight because we have enough people and new guys, but we'll schedule a review for, and I'll do my best to report on what I heard sometime in the future. Okay. And I, um, can I just say one quick thing to save you going forward? Since we have a number of new guys, uh, Ron and others, if you would like to be placed on our mailing list, so that you get a reminder before each meeting and that's basically what we use the mailing list for to let you know of relevant webinars please if you haven't already entered your email please put your email and send it to um to me rd at ancan.org rd at ancan.org and i will make sure that you get on the um on the mailing list thanks okay so or you can uh, put or you can put it in the chat window and send it to me or to everybody if you wish or you can send it directly to me in the chat window the chat window is the little speech right, bubble the chat window. on the top go ahead right so i'm supposed to remind everybody thanks rick the chat window is the is this little bubble in the upper right hand corner of your screen next to the gear and you please use it uh, to tell the group things that you think are interesting, and um, so uh, if, and if you and to communicate with each other. Okay, so I guess I want to begin with Brett. Brett, are you with us? Yes, I'm here. Okay, 
So we're going to, just to help things along and get you to meet with the group and we all, so we're all on the same page, I'm going to ask sort of a more, a, a sort of a structured list of questions that will help us help understand where you are and how we can help. So, so Brett, uh, how old are you? 59. You're 59. Okay. And where do you live? In Virginia. Where in Virginia? Carrollton. Okay. Just outside of Newport News. Okay. Mm -hmm. And when were, when were you 59? When were you the first diagnosed? Diagnosed when I was 50. So I was diagnosed in September of 19, Gleason score of nine, had surgery in two years ago now, followed by radiation, followed by chemo, and okay. I have a rising PSA. And you have a rising PSA. And so where, where, where were you? being treated at the time and where are you being treated now? Uh, I had my surgery at University of California, San Francisco, and then follow on radiation and chemotherapy in Newport News, Virginia, currently be treated okay. in, in Virginia. Okay. And so you had your, your first radical prostatectomy. And so where are you being treated now? In Virginia, in Newport News, currently. Okay. And what kind of a doc are you seeing in Newport News? An oncologist. Re huh. General oncologist. A general <coughs> oncologist. And what kind of a treatment are you getting these days? Um, just hormone therapy right now. Just on hormone therapy. Okay. Yeah. And going and on Zytiga starting tomorrow. Okay, and Zytiga tomorrow. And what's your current PSA? 3.29. And what was the lowest it got over the past couple of years? 1.1. Okay. So clearly, and have, have you had any scans to tell us where the disease is? Um, yes, just had a... Uh, scan oh a month ago it, and uh -huh. it's uh, in the lymph nodes it's in the lymph nodes yeah and what kind of a scan was it it was an actiman pet scan okay and there's no bone metastases no okay And so you're going to start Zytika tomorrow and then presumably see what happens going forward. Correct. Um, now, what about, have you had any genetic testing? Yes, I have. I've had a decipher test, an in vita genomic test, and a um, DNA test, um, foundation one. Okay. And what did they, did they find anything? Yeah, they, they found mutations. So the foundation one shows three different mutations, none of which are currently under a clinical trial. Okay. Do you, can, can you tell us what they are or you don't, do you remember what they were? I, I don't, re one of them's a P10 uh, loss. I don't recall the other two right now. I've got this study TP, here. TP53, P10, yes. TP53, and um, what's the other one? What's the other one that goes often goes with those two? Uh, a, maybe um, ATM? Uh, no, not ATM. But you no. do have P10 and P53. Yes. Not, but yeah. what, about RB, what about RB? No. Okay. Good. Yes, that's, I hear, that's absolutely correct. So at the moment, you're being, you're being treated by a general oncologist and you, so I guess the question I have for you is what, what are the questions you, ha, you might have for us? 
I just wanted to listen in and hear what goes on here and was hoping to hear from the um, set the conference that was held. Uh -huh. So are there any questions? I mean, my question would be, do you feel comfortable with your general oncologist in Newport News? Um, not particularly, no, but there's not a geniturinary oncologist close by. I went up to um, Sloan Kettering two weeks ago to talk to a specialist. Um, so who did you talk to? Who did you talk to? Um, I'm trying to remember the name. I don't remember right offhand. But a GU oncologist. Male, male or female? Male. He was male. Uh, his specialties are prostate cancer and clinical trials. Right. Was it was it Michael, Michael Morris? Morris? No, it wasn't Michael Mars. Was it? Um, it wasn't Howard Sher. I'm I'm sure. Um, it Just wasn't Danila. My wife grabbing my phone then? so I can look. Well, then, anyway, what did the, at did, Memorial? What did they tell you? They they said that there's not a good clinical trial right now, and that the right step was to go on the Zytiga, which was already my plan. Uh -huh. Yep. And you'll be also getting prednisone. Yes. Okay. And that's what I'm waiting for now is the prednisone to show up. <clears throat> Are there any other and there questions from the group? Yeah, Brett, what was your decipher risk score? My decipher risk score. Um, not sure what you mean by a risk score with all the different scores on here. It's it's on page one. When did you get it? Uh, got it in Jan February I mean, twenty. When and when? February of 20. There's a grade group on it. Okay. Not, five. Not... You know, uh, I'm not sure a decipher score is even relevant for anyone with a high yeah. risk uh, yeah. prostate cancer, like eight, nine, 10. I think that's more for the, the, um, uh, Gleason sevens. No, that's the other stuff, the Prolaris and the other, the other. Oh, uh, I thought Decipher was. Device. Yeah, Decipher, but Decipher is too, Ben. I mean, Decipher really tells you how likely your cancer is to recur. It's, um, you get a, yes. Right, and yeah. I, I think not, it's not really relevant. And and we we know that it's recurred, and I think the more relevant information with Brett is that he's got we know he's got P10 and TP53, so right. that tells us a lot more than the decipher score would tell. It may have even been based on having identified P10 and TP53 at that time. Um, I, I have a I have a several questions for you, Brett. Do you remember yep. if that if that um, Lisa nine was a five plus four or a four plus five? Five plus four. Thanks. And what was your PSA at the time that you were diagnosed? When I was diagnosed, it was just above five. By the time I had surgery, it was 29 point something. And how long was that gap? Four months. Okay. So I went from five to 29 in four months. Yes. Okay. And who did the surgery for you at UCSF? Dr. Carroll. He did. And, he did. And, how did you and how did you like Dr. Carroll? I was damn impressed with Dr. Carroll. That's why I went there. I went to um, four or five hospitals, the local one here, and then four other hospitals, and decided to go to Dr. Carroll for the surgery. Um, the, the number of people on this call who have had Dr. Carroll and I, I go back an awful long way with Peter and um, he was kind enough to send us a, uh, send me a nice note 
around our poster last week. Um, oh. He he was the guy that put me on the path to advocacy. He and a couple of other docs there. Um, yeah. When you did your radiation, do you know you? If, if I'm not mistaken, you said you did that in Newport News, the radiation? Yes, that's correct. And do you recall exactly what they radiated at that time? It was the prostate bed, the lymph node bed, um, and other parts down around the abdomen. So it was a focused one, um, and they did direction using tattoos on me to make sure I was placed right. correctly. So in other words, they did, you th you do believe that they radiated your whole pelvic girdle and not just, yes. the, just not the fossa. Yes, correct. Okay. Yeah, that was, that was, and when you got chemo, um, how much chemo did you get? And, and, and was it docetaxel that you got? It was docetaxel. I did six cycles of docetaxel would have continued but i was having many side effects from it i have uh continuing neuropathy from my dose attacks mm. okay so here's here's a good little tip for the neuropathy if you're not doing it it's helped me a lot this year and it's helped some other guys and we credit it to peter kafka the guy in the red shirt at the top which is um a daily vitamin b6 supplement i i am doing daily vitamin i'm doing a b complex that includes b6 um, because my doctor had told I, me to try vitamin b yeah yeah um you might want to talk to the doc about just a b6 an additional okay. b6 for i will do um a i mean i have I have a little bit of neuropathy this year, but nowhere near as much as I've had in past years. And I usually get it in the winter. Um, it's not from chemo, it's from the hormone therapy. But um, I just want to share that with you. Um, okay. So it's worth it's worth talking about. Yeah, um, how much are you taking? What's the dosage? Oh, I just take a single. I'd have to okay. run in and pull it out That's but a, I get them I, I, I get the b6 from CVS and it's just a single tablet but I can't remember the okay what, it, what it's measured in um and, and it's helped it took a, it took about two months to kick in I'll tell you that so it wasn't immediate okay. now the other thing that I I think um did you figure out who you saw at Memorial Sloan Kettering no it wasn't on my calendar like I thought it was. Okay. I did well, figure out my third mutation. It's TMPRSS2. Okay, okay so simplest. that's a very, that's also a very common mutation. Right. Yes. And it may it's very it's it's quite controversial, but it it may give you some uh, protection against uh, COVID, but but that's very controversial. Um, and it also so, may make Vitiga more effective. Good. Oh, okay. So there you go. Um, a couple of other things. One is that we have a group for men in your situation who are under 60. We would welcome you to that. John Ivory, who is a member of that group, has been kind enough to put it in the chat window. If we have your email, we'll make sure that we you get a reminder. We'll check yes, the I'm box actually, so you get a... I'm already on the email for that. So I signed up okay. for both this one and that one, and I just Terrific. haven't had a chance to log into that one. Okay. Um, the other thing I wanted to say to you is that um, depending on your local guy, your local oncologist, I mean, I, I find it sort of a little interesting. When did you finish chemo? I should ask you that first. How, uh, how long was it? Jan January 13th of 21. So you've been off chemo for 12 months. Yeah. So your local guy, I think, could could well use some navigation from a good GU med onc because it's weird that 
you've been um, off. You, you, he hasn't added that abiraterone, or she hasn't sure. added abiraterone sure. or something sooner. Yeah, and, um, I agree. One of the things that we strongly urge here is that you have a quarterback who is a GU medical oncologist. And often, if you live in the boonies, then um, you can um, you can get them to team up. The other thing is you've got a guy, you do have a guy, and I, I want to bring in Rich Jackson because I heard that, I heard the mellow tones of Mr. Jackson because he's a local guy to you. Okay. And, um, and Mark Fleming is not a bad choice to use as your doc. I mean, he's, he's a pretty good GU med onc. Um, he's in no, Virginia he's not Beach, a GU med onc. And he does have he an was. office in Hampton. He's a general specializing in, in blood cancers. Oh, well, that's I thought, I thought Fleming was a, I thought Fleming was a GU med onc. I mean, he's, he's, he does a bunch of trials. Oh, he's all over the trials, but Dr. Fleming is pretty straightforward as far as following whatever the latest procedure might be. That's at least six to eight months old. Mm, I'll defer to Mr. Jackson. But I think, you um, know, my sense is that you do have this contact at Memorial and perhaps that person could be the backup for your local oncologist. I mean, right now they, you see, I would argue that you've gotten pretty much the appropriate tests of your data. And the only thing that, that most of us would have seen in other people would be an earlier use of Zytiga. But I think you should keep in contact with this guy at Memorial. Yeah, and it's Dr. Abida, Abida that I saw at Memorial. No, oh, he's yeah, he's a good guy. He's he's I mean he's a good one. So you know, so maybe think, hold on to him. Uh what's his first name? It begins with a W, doesn't it? Wasim. Wasim. Yeah, Thank you. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Um so, so you know, maybe you can get your guy to work with um Abida um going forward. Yeah, or I've been thinking about uh, transferring down and making the trip to Duke to go to a comprehensive cancer center and find it. Right. Um, uh, Dan George, Dan George knows us real well, and um, he he's as good, if not better, than a beater. Okay. That's who we. That's who. I mean, him or Armstrong. But I, I, I don't really know Armstrong. I just know him by reputation. Dan George, we know well, and he always gets rave reviews. Okay, excellent. Okay, are there any, so Brett, do you, I think the, the under 60 group would be someplace to look for, for more advice. Okay. And, other, and are there any other questions from anybody else? Um, Rich, do you, do you want to chime in at all, Rich? Well, it's, Brett, are you seeing Dr. Fleming here? No, I I haven't. I went and saw him uh, a year ago, and uh, decided to stay with my uh, current doctor until I found a specialist. Okay. So certainly, please keep attending. And we sort of can follow up of what's going on and hope to to have you to have, that we can be helpful. Who was okay. the second one at Duke? Dan George and who else? Um, Alan Armstrong. Alan Armstrong. Uh, Andrew you. Andrew Armstrong. Sorry. Andrew, Andrew Armstrong. Armstrong. And um, I just wanted to add that that B six from CVS that Rick was talking about is a hundred milligrams. Thank you. Thank you, Gary. Sorry? I said thank you very much, Gary. Ah, mm -hmm. thank you. Is that the one that causes flushing, facial flushing, or am I thinking of a different B vitamin? 
niacin maybe is what I'm thinking. Yeah, niacin, 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 niacin causes flushing. Yeah. Hey, I'll take flushing if it took away my neuropathy. Yeah. No, but niacin was more used, the, it's an old drug for cholesterol control. So, okay, we're going to move on uh, yeah. to, to Chris. Chris, are you with us? Uh, I can't see you. I see Chris Carino, but his mic is, oh, he's got no mic. Well, no mic. Chris, Come on, on Come on back next week. Come on back next week. We'll call in on the phone. And we'll we'll definitely give you priority and and um maybe try Ron maybe try Ron uh if he's if he's still with us and speaks up. Ron, are you with us? Uh I do not see Ron on the list now wait a minute george rodriguez are you new to the group george are you rodriguez are you i see you here too george you were saw your face before george Yeah, I'm sorry. Well, I apologize. My, uh, I was having a little technical difficulties. Yes, I, I'm new to the group. Okay, so why don't we go through and introduce you to the group, and we can talk about you and 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 give you, hopefully, give you some useful feedback. So, okay. uh, so George, how old are you? I am uh, 58. I got okay. Another young person, 58. <laughs> And where do you live? In uh, Chantilly, Virginia. Which one? Where in Virginia? Chantilly, Virginia. Oh, Chantilly. Okay. And when were you first diagnosed? Uh, the official diagnosis was in uh, 2019. In 2019, in September, or did you I say? Was, it was more like uh, May. May 2019. And what were your symptoms at the time? Um, I actually started having problems with uh, pr prostatitis. Mm -hmm. And um, I had a bout when I was in England, and then I had a bout when I came back. And then um, I went and had that looked at. And then I uh, had a PSA done, and so my PSA was actually elevated. Uh, we waited so what for- what was it at the time? In 2018, it was uh, a five. Okay. And then it ele elevated to a seven, and then uh, we ended up having a um, a biopsy, and that confirmed that I had cancer. Okay, and what was the result of the biopsy? What was uh, your recent score? Yeah, it was a four plus three. Okay, a four plus three. And what happened next? Um, after the biopsy, then um, yeah, I decided to go ahead and have the, uh, the uh, prostatectomy in May of um, 2019, right? You were diagnosed in March. Yep, okay, I'm sorry, I was diagnosed in March, and then in May I had the uh, the surgery. I, just, I chose not to do radiation or chemo at that time, and then I was undetected, undetectable for about two years, and then in uh, May of last year, 2021, um, I was um, detectable. So I had, um, I think it was a point, Point one around it, I can't remember. Um, uh -huh. Then it started creeping up, and so I decided to do um, chemotherapy. I've had so where so where was where was all this done? Where where did you have your prostate scar the scar cancer cancer uh, center? The what and where is that? That's uh, right here in Fairfax. In Fairfax, okay. And who was your doctor at the time? Dr. Aragon Chin. Mm -hmm. And then when you switched to chemo, wh where was that done? Same place. And who was your doctor for that? 
Same, same, same doctor. Harrigan Chin. Harrigan Chin. Harrigan yep. Chin. Okay. Yeah, the, the uh, my surgeon was actually uh, uh, Dr. Um, Chung. So he did the surgery, but Chin is the oncologist. Uh huh. And they didn't do any follow-up radiation after surgery. Uh, actually, mm -hmm. after I had my surgery, Dr. Chin, uh, Dr. Aragon rec had re you know, recommended, but I chose not to do it. Okay. And so your PSA is up and you're being treated by Dr. Chin in Fairfax. So, by the right. way, we're, there are a huge number of people from the DMV on this call. Yeah, actually, I, I, I just completed my last um, chemo session. So I did six sections. And so uh, this was that, so that docetaxel? Yes. And I've also started, I also started, um, ADT with, um, I forgot the name of the drug. Is it injected? Uh, Eric, uh, Eric, Eric, Eligard, sorry. Eligard, right. Okay. And then what are they planning after that? So what is, so you just finished your, your docetaxel and what's your PSA now? It's been undetect undetectable for about, uh, three months. Okay. And you're getting and so this, Thursday, this Thursday, I do a body and a bone scan. And because uh, mm -hmm. uh, when we actually started the process, we found some nodules in my lungs, which okay. would, based on everything that we've been able to determine, it appears to be that that's where the, the, the cancer uh, met to. Uh huh. And so that's what's next. And so it's at the most, so right now you're getting Eligard, ADT. That's correct, yep. And have you had any genetic testing? No. Okay. So, I mean, I think you, as you heard just before, we think genetic testing both your germ, for your germline and for your tumor could provide very useful information in terms of treatment. Uh, I mean, and, um, I, can you can you elaborate on that? I'm not because that's new to me. I, I don't know what that is. Okay, so you have two types of potential sources of mutations that could affect your tumor. The first are potential mutations in your genome that you carry with you and that you would pass on to your heirs or your progeny. Well, not heirs necessarily, but progeny. And the second is the tumor can mutate and have its own mutations, as we just heard before, such as P10 or P53. And knowing which mutations are where can make a big difference in treatment because Many of them now are becoming actionable with specific drugs. And this is what this is the concept of precision medicine. That based on the kinds of mutations that you have in the presentation of your tumor, your treatment can be unique to you. Okay. Or more unique or tailored to your mutation. All and right. I think most of us would suggest that you get those tests so you know what's going on. Okay. Both from the, your genome, which is easy. Your genome is easy. You just take a, a swab from your saliva. And for the tumor, since if they have the uh, slides, they can do it directly from the, t the sample tissue from your biopsy. Okay. But, you know, the fact that you do have metastases somewhere and right now, luckily, it's undetectable, uh, me, would suggest that, you know, really, more the more aggressive treatment you do early on, it seems, the more likely you are to benefit. Okay. So, I mean, at least from my point of view, you might ask Dr. Chin if he thought that perhaps using a strong a second generation anti-androgen would be advisable and why she wouldn't recommend it okay so that i mean those drugs are used are, are more are stronger they block 
androgen. So when you take Eligard, it blocks the androgen synthesis from your testes and in your adrenals. But it doesn't block androgen synthesis everywhere, including the cells, even cancer cells make their own. So that's why second generation drugs are pretty much universal these days as far as part of guidelines. Len, would you like to comment maybe? I agree with you there, Herb. I would also wonder if he might benefit from a uh, second opinion on his pathology report. It seems, uh, you know, to have the cancer was in his lymph nodes, I believe. Yes. Was, lung nodules, it sounds more aggressive than a seven. Um, I'm not sure what good it would do, but just for accuracy's sake, a, a second opinion on the pathology report might be. Uh, I'm idea. wondering, if you, did, you, did you get a pathology report from your surgery, your RP? They, yes. Did they give you post-surgery? Uh, yeah, there, there, there was a pathology report. And what did they say? Did they leave it at a four plus three? I believe so, if I recall correctly. Yeah. Hmm. So, so the, a couple of a couple of things are a little bit strange to me because um, Aragon Chin is a great. I don't say she's a great doc, but she's a really good job doc, and we do refer to her. Um, mm -hmm. The NCCN guidelines. Um, call for germline testing, which means to see if you are carrying an inherited um, mutation. So it's kind of strange that she's never even gone that route of asking for it. The second you know, point if, is... If, if I can interject, I mean, it could be that she's making that direct link because I have a his family history of it. So, um, so you have a family that. history of prostate cancer? I do. Well, I what, other can what other cancers do you have? Yeah, I have what three other cancers? Have prostate cancer. And what other cancers do you have in the in 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 the family other than prostate? Anything else? Uh, yeah, I, I had a brother had colon cancer. Okay. okay. So, so that's I very relevant it. information. Yes. Herb, let me let me finish my thought and then you can come in afterwards. Very relevant information. Um, and all the more reason why Dr. Chin should have ordered germline testing, because there is a relationship between colon and, and prostate cancer, as Peter Kafka will tell you. And um it may be that there's something going on there. So I would go back to Dr. Chin and say, Dr. Chin, I want germline test. I want to do a germline or inherited mutation test. And, and don't ask us, should I get it? You say, I want to do this because I have colon cancer and a lot of prostate cancer in my family. That's the first thing. And the second thing is that if you've got recent tissue, I think that Len raises a really good point in that we should take a good look and see if you're making any mutations yourself. Because this pattern of lung cancer, lung nodules, um, is a little bit unusual. I don't I don't know that the pathology, rereading the pathology is going to tell us much if we know there's already know there's lung nodules, unless they happen to see um, a different type of cancer. And, and that might be what Len had in mind, and that might be why it's worth having the pathology retested. But that said, um, I think, you know, retest, Reread the pathology at John at John Ho Johns Hopkins with Dr. Epstein. Get a germline test and get a somatic test. Um, what, what's your PSA level at right now? It's undetectable. So really, in order to get a good reading, um, yeah, if 
who's the let's see we've got people who have had issues around lung nodules before and had trouble finding them gary peters isn't that you with the lung nodules still, i saw i think he may have hung up well, hey, Rick. hey Rick. yeah david muslin david muslin too rick i went through that Okay, talk to us a little bit about the lung nodules and were they able to biopsy them, David? They were not able to biopsy them. Uh, I thought we had them, had several different tests, and then they said, no, you don't have lung nodules. Remember, I went through that with uh, Hussein. They, yes, yeah, yeah. Hey, Rick. Uh, yes. George, I'm just interested to know how did they determine you have lung nodules we had we had a ct scan so when, when they actually de detected them they were actually too small to biopsy however one of the initial concerns was that it may have it may have been associated with my the COVID testing uh COVID uh -huh. vaccines. so we did wait for a while to see if they would go away but they didn't i will say though after receiving this the the the, uh, the treatment they actually had, I did have another CAT scan that showed that they actually had reduced by 50%. Okay, I, I have lung nodules and uh, after I was on ADT for four months, I had another CT scan and they reduced in size a little bit, but they haven't been able to do a, a biopsy. They couldn't get to one of them. so. It's kind of in question whether I have <clears throat> have uh, cancer in my lungs or not. So that's kind I'm of. Get, I'm, I'm I'm going to get a PSMA scan. I don't know. Have you had a PSMA scan at, at all? I have not. Well, I'm. I'm Tom, on is, his, Tom, his 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 PSA is too low right, right. now. Right. not show anything. Register. Uh, okay. He's below detectable. Okay, I but went I think, off. What I, I, think, I would agree with Lynn. I think sending the slides to to Epstein and Hopkins might not be a bad idea, even at this level. Yeah, what we really want, what we really would like to do, is try and get a sample of one of those nodules. But I think they're hard, Rick. Yeah, you're right. They move but around. But I think. It's worth discussing with with Dr. Chin and and um, seeing if it's possible, um, but definitely get the germline because there could be something else going on there. And then if there is, there there could be even more reason to to get a somatic test because it might give us some other information. But I, I you know I think she I think she needs to be a little more aggressive in in right. In, trying to find out what's going on with you. Uh, okay. Hey, George, I went off my medicine in order to get my PSA to go up in order to get a PSMA scan. So oh. it's a risk I have to take to my PSA is above one right now. So uh, so you stopped taking uh, the uh, your ADT? Yes. OK. Uh, I was also on apalutamide as well, so uh, should get the PSMA scan in a couple weeks here, and then I'll go back on my medicine. Yeah, I'm not, I don't know, that, I would say talk to Dr. Shin. For sure. Yeah, I see her, I see her next Monday, so I'll be able to have a good conversation. Yeah, but I would definitely talk to her about genetic testing. That's number one on okay. my list. All right. And, you know, and given that you're, you know, you're, you're, I would also talk to her about, you know, a, a higher level of, uh, of antagonism, either with uh, abiraterone or enzalutamide or something in those families. Any yes. other comments? Um, I, I, somebody just came back on the, on the telephone. Is that Gary Peters by any chance? It is, Rick. I got knocked off the first one I called back in. Okay. Gary, 
didn't you have issues with lung nodules? Uh, fortunately, not. I, I, I have not had that. Okay. Hopefully. Rick, I, Rick I, this is Frank Fabish. I had, I had uh, lung nodules. Right. That's right. I knew somebody did. And did they were they able to biopsy your lung nodules in the end yes. or not, Frank? Yes, they, they were. were able to biopsy them. It, my lung nodules were uh, identified by an Oxman PET scan, and mm. uh, my PSA at the time was about two point eight. Right. And then um, at OSU they biopsied them and confirmed that it was metastatic prostate cancer and my doc started me right away on um on treatment with both um chemo and adt right 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 so i mean i i think it's I think it's worth having the discussion as to whether these could be biopsyable, A, to confirm if they're, if they're cancer, and B, if they are, then we have a sample that we could get analyzed, which is going to be very helpful to you in indicating treatment. Um, so Sorry, I, I have... So Dr. Aragon and I have had this conversation in... Um... The module, the nodules are too small. They're about three. At this point, they're about three millimeters. So really, okay. difficult. She was saying that we would need to at least have about ten millimeters to be able to get a good, good, good sample. How how big were yours, Frank? Mine was about uh, one centimeter. Oh wow! Yeah, that's ten millimeters. Yeah, she's right that's on. 10 millimeters. Yeah, she's right on. She's right on, George, and it's great. That's great, but I, I I think you know the only the only thing we'd say, and we've said it enough times to you already, is you you got to get at least some germline testing, right? Okay, and, and see if um because you the the your your concern is something called Lynch syndrome, L Y N C H, Lynch syndrome, um where there is a um, mutation in the, the there's there's several different um genetic mutations in lynch in, for lynch syndrome um but there's a there is definitely a correlation with prostate cancer and colon cancer there okay um, have the women any women in your family had cancer no not at all okay well my, well, my mom had lung Good. cancer but that was attributed to the smoking hmm. right no um because there are certain female cancers that are also related to to Lynch syndrome. That's why I was asking. But yeah, I, I mean, and it's such an easy test, and she'll do it in a heartbeat. She'll say, "Of right. course." Okay. Yeah, we'll do it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Great information. And then I think again, just like you heard, we do have this under sixty group that you may want yeah. to join, and I think the information is in the chat window. Yeah, but I, I already looked it up. Good. Thanks. Are you on our Are you on our database, George? I should be. I, I joined, uh, um, and 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 I believe so. So unless I need okay. to do something and join in the group. Okay. Well, okay. we'll 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 check, and if not, we'll. If not, right. you'll have to come back. If you don't hear, if you don't right. get an email from us next week, you uh, you'll have to come, come back. back and find us. We won't find right. you. Absolutely, we'll do. Uh, this is John. I, um, I know that George doesn't like radiation, but FVRT can shoot at three millimeters. Right, lynch node. Hmm. Yeah, and we know there's a really good radiation oncologist in your area, right? Because mm. Joel used him. So, so the question I have is, is what, what, what would, what would, we what, what would we radiate, since the we're lymph literally... node. the lymph node, the lymph node, right? And it's soft tissue, 
and depending on what's around it, they and they, there are now very targeted radiation methods, SBRT methods, where they use very focused radiation and aim it at a very small area. Okay. So I think you should definitely discuss that with Dr. Aragon Chin. Okay. Right. Now, now Joe Blanchett's guy was really more of a of a neuro guy and a skull guy because of his issue, but we would the guy that that I think Herb would recommend and yeah, a lot I'd of guys in your area right. like is Sean is Sean Collins. Right. I mean, I would definitely recommend Sean Collins at Georgetown. Okay, Sean Collins. A, right. And I, you know, he's first rate. Okay. Put it in the chat window for you. Right. Sean Collins at Georgetown. Um, I, I, you know, he's as good as he's as good as it comes he's in terms of right, right. There's uh, no question about for, that. for prostate cancer. Um, I, I would second that, a, uh, Rick. George Rovder here. I would second Sean Collins. Okay. Yeah. Well, I spelled okay. it wrong. Sorry about that. I'll try again. C O L L I N S. Right. If, if the PSA, if the PSA left him undetectable, and he's and he's done those attacks, so I mean, I don't know if if it was me, I don't know if I'd be running to get my lungs irradiated right away. I'd try to wait and see if. What my PSA starts doing, whether it starts coming back again or something, because the, the chemo might have might have done a trick on it. Right, right. It's it's, it's a good point, but I, I I'm a little confused because some people were talking about lymph nodes and other people were talking about lung modules. So I don't know. Do, do you have? Um, you you also do have lymph nodes as well, correct, George? I have one. So during the surgery, they they removed one, two. Uh huh. Right. So they did surgery uh -huh. on some of them. And and have you had any radiation at all? I can't remember. No. no have you had any? You have not. So you know that's another discussion to have. Is what about getting what about getting your whole pelvic girdle radiated? And, and that might be the next step if you see a recurrence just to radiate right. across the pelvic girdle right uh, but i i mean I mean, nothing to do with him. right peter makes a good point that if he's undetectable now maybe it just pays to wait to see right but first get that, but genetic testing is certainly needed okay i'll definitely so talk are to there you. any other are there any other questions for george okay if not we're going to move on to the reg our old timers. And I'm going to take the chair's prerogative to give you an update. Uh, today, I got an email saying I was accepted into the um, moderated trial of lutetium-177 at Hopkins. So uh, I look forward to hopefully that experience uh, sometime soon. Now, one thing I discovered by looking at the at the dates it's really hard to work around some of the things on my calendar but i hope they that i can figure it all out but um the deal was i think i was one of four slots that hopkins got and i think what it is is that i was ready i had all the information that 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 uh novartis needed including a previous psma pet scan all the data on you know, hormone levels and stuff like that. Whereas I think a lot of guys who were on the list did not have all that. So I think that helped me. And then the other thing I have to update is today was my last leukophoresis for Provenge. And that, so that seems to be going well. So hopefully these therapies will uh, give me a shot and we'll see as time to time to time goes by. Glad to hear it. Uh, Herb, since since you have both Al Latimer and Dennis McGuire on this call, I think it's very fair to take a little time for you so you can ask them about side effects. 
Well, um, thanks, Rick. I wasn't going to take extra time, but uh, we do have some. We don't have a lot of guys on the list, so I think we have a few minutes. So Al, or it, it would really be helpful to know how things went. Yeah, hi Herb, it's Dennis. Uh, two side Dennis. effects. Um, the first is fatigue for you know the first three to five days after treatment. You, I think you had radiation, so you're familiar with that. Uh, it's you know it it gradually wears off. The second is uh, a little bit of dry mouth. So they encourage you to drink a lot of fluids the day before, day of, and days after. Mm -hmm. um, but again, that passes also as the lutetium uh, gets processed and you flush it out through your kidneys. Uh -huh. Well, that doesn't sound awful. No, manageable it, for me. It, right. I mean, I just have to be careful in terms of scheduling things. I mean, I'm still working and have things coming up at work, but I'm gonna, hopefully I'll work around it. Al, did you have any any words of wisdom for so, me? So I have had all six treatments now, um, and the dry mouth issue has gotten worse and worse and worse with each treatment. And really? my my sense of my sense of of taste now, it's not gone, but it's changed. Some of the things I used to love to eat, I can't stand it now. It just doesn't taste oh. right. Um, the, the dry mouth really does weird things. And uh, hopefully it's going to subside some as time goes on. Um, but right now, you, you don't really realize what, how much saliva you generate when you eat something, especially something dry. I mean, dry foods really just, I just really cannot eat them at all unless I'm constantly drinking. And, mm. and Herb, when, when you um, do, do this, do, start doing this, they have this questionnaire that they have you fill out each time. And the first time um, I filled it out, one of the questions was, do you have to drink food? You have to drink uh, water with your food in order to swallow it. And I thought at the beginning, that that was that was kind of a curious thing, but now that I've been through six cycles, yeah, it's real. Yeah. Um, and you know, I tried I tried you know drinking a lot, but it's like I said, I hope hopefully it'll get better now. Um, yeah, I've done that. six. I hate to lose my sense of taste. That would be a major loss. So what can't you eat? One of my one of my favorite things was uh, was a um, um, meatball and sausage hoagie with uh, with Parmesan and tomato sauce, and and I ordered one the other day to treat myself, and I almost couldn't eat it. It was the weirdest thing. Oh. I don't, I can't really explain it, but it just did not taste the same at all. Wow! Um, makes you this lutetium makes you eat healthy, Al. It's a, it's a, you know as a side effect. You've got to eat healthy with it. Yeah, I got to eat. I got so. What about grapefruit? So, uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm changing my eating habits. Well, I wasn't a bad eater to begin with. That's why I said I, I was, that uh, hoagie was a treat. It's not something I do very often. Okay. Um, All right. So, no, no, no. so um, well, that's a little, it's a little, it makes it a little scary for me. But I think I'm going to do well, it. Anyway. I think I have Herb, to do it. Well, her. Herb, I have a question. I have a question for you, Herb. When you went through chemo, how did that affect your taste buds? Oh, it I it just horrible. It just was to, I couldn't all I could drink was tomato juice. I couldn't taste anything else. Okay, it but terrible. it came back, well, didn't it? But it did come back. Yes. Well, the uh, lutetium attacks the salivary glands because yes, there's PSMA there. Right. So that's 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 an issue. Um, what's your PSA right now? I don't really know because they haven't measured it for a couple of weeks, but it's probably six. So, so you know, when I started this, my PSA was 60, not six, six zero. And now it's 1.5. Um, I, I have another uh, lab 
next week. And I'm going back to UCLA in a couple of weeks for a follow-up PSMA PET mm -hmm. and uh, FTG PET. So I'm going to have and see where it's, see where I stand. Um, the fatigue kind of comes and goes. Um, it, there was wasn't that bad an issue with the fatigue. It's the dry mouth that's really I'm really struggling uh -huh. with. Yeah, that I think I would have trouble with too. But I guess it's the price we have to pay. Um, Hopefully, it's for temporary. sure. I mean, I mean, I had an out of control PSA, and uh, now now I've got a you know at least a at least a holiday from it. Right. Okay, the trick I, with the I, dry, I, there is a trick with the dry mouth, which we've heard mentioned, and it might be worth discussing. Which is you get. Sim, and I'm not sure which way around this is. I think lutetium is a beta, right? And it's actium a is a alpha. Alpha, so correct. If you, so if you get the alpha, if you get one dose of alpha, you can't really do this on a trial, unfortunately. But no. if you get a dose of alpha, it doesn't even have to be actium, that um, it protects the salivary glands from the beta. Huh. And so people do better and have less salivary, uh, hmm. salivatory effects. Well, I hope we'll see. This is, I mean, I knew I read about it. And in fact, there is a guy at NIH that I borrowed a piece of equipment from who's, uh, who's actually working on a drug to prevent this. So maybe I'll call him up and see how far along he is. So at any rate, I don't <laughs> want to take any more time. Thank you for the feedback. So we'll start. Just, uh, one, other, one other thing real quick. Uh, I, I drink a lot of biotin now. Well, not drink, but I use biotin a lot and it helps a lot. Okay, great. And one more thing, Herb. Yes. You speculate that you got in because you are well, well prepared. Yes. Were you a Boy That's Scout? That's my guess. Were you a Boy I'm Scout? Sorry? Were you a Boy Scout? I would, no, I was a Boy Scout for about two weeks. And you, then you took the motto with you, though. Basically, I was a Boy Scout for two weeks and said, why the hell do I have to wear this stupid uniform to go walk in the woods? But you're I'd still be prepared. In the woods. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm be prepared. No, there's. it's more like the Tom Lehrer song, be prepared when the Girl Scout uh, yeah. comes along. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh, per, per guys, I do want to say a quick... I. I I do want to say a quick thing about this lutetium, this managed access lutetium trial, because if you read um, the reminder, um, we pointed out that it's opened up. Um, to the best of our knowledge, it's opened up in the places we expected it to be. Uh, that's what we're told. We, um, I haven't heard, I know that um, John Birch is in touch with Novartis, and we're hoping to hear a complete list of the sites, but we don't we don't have it yet. Um, if John doesn't get it, I, I will try and get it at a slightly higher level. Um, but what we do know, obviously because of Herb, is that people that were on the um, wait list are now being accepted. There are not many slots at every program. They've given very limited slots and they've sort of pass them out. We expect them are slots at UCLA, at Tulane, at Chicago, Mount Sinai for sure. We Mount Sinai and UFC for sure, because because that's what we were told by Nevadas. And obviously Hopkins because of Herb. But um, we can't tell you where else right now. Um, what we can tell you is if you are on a wait list anywhere, it's time to check in with them. If you're not on a wait list, it may be too late to get yourself on. Um, you know, the, the talk is that it may get approved before they get through the wait list. So um, I just wanted to, to give you the intel that we have, and that, that's all we have right now. Any, unless anybody on the call has more info, additional information I haven't provided, I'd be very interested to hear. Yeah, I mean, I see that. Uh... Al put in that Novartis is really strict with the scheduling. That may, that may kill my Paris trip. Well, I told you that earlier on when we right. talked. <laughs> so, 
hopefully I can make it work. All right, uh, let's move on. Peter, you had an update for us. I'd rather I'd rather hear from Tony because we skipped him last time. No, but I mean, I mean, yeah, Tony's on the list. I mean, we I, we skipped. I mean, the next person is Jeff, who we skipped to last week. But give me your quick update. We have time for everybody. Okay, real quick. Uh, my PSA and numbers are creeping, so no panic. Um, I'm up. My PSA just went up to uh, zero point one five. It's going up about three or four one hundredths each month. Um, and I'm on. Uh, I have not been on Lupron or Elegard or any of that stuff for six months now. I'm on monotherapy darolutamide. My uh, testosterone has climbed now to 50. And it creeps up a little bit each month. Um, so that's where I am. It's uh, it's an interesting place. And I uh, just keep an eye on things. And uh, hopefully I can get a lot of mileage out of this before I have to go back on Lupron or, or anything else. And I, I talked to Len about this. I've got a scheduled um, Prolia shot coming up in about a couple of weeks, early in March, when I get my port uh, flushed. And since I haven't been on Lupron in six months, I was asking whether it was necessary, but since I guess it wouldn't hurt because I'm still on darolutamide, so I might as well get one and uh, just keep it up. So that's that's my report. Uh -huh. well, hopefully so the, the, um, the Prolia, the reason you want it is not so much related to the ADT, it's related to your testosterone level. So if your testosterone level is still pretty low, like at 50, then there's reason to get it. I mean, we get it because of the ADT, because that drives down. But the fact is, the, um, the darolutamide has been keeping your testosterone low. So there's good reason for you still to get the prolia to keep your bones strong. You said 0 0.015, correct? Uh, 0 0.15. Oh, 0 0.15, okay. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I mean, the other thing is, um, and you might want to talk to Schultz about it, um, is, just in case we have any glitches with the with the FDA approval, have Schultz call Calais and get you on that UCLA wait list. Yeah, although there's other things, there's other things in the works. I mean, I'm still a Keytruda uh, candidate because of my mutations, and I'm and I've never done um, Olaparib either, so I've got those possibilities as well. I've, I've never tried. Okay. Peter, uh, are you feeling like you have more energy since you stopped taking Lupron or Eligard? Oh, and for sure. Yes, for sure. Yeah. I mean, my yeah. testosterone is going up about seven or eight point eight, eight to ten points a month. So. It's, and, you know. and what about hmm. your uh, hemoglobin, hematocrit? Is that going up? Uh, that's, no, I'm still anemic. I'm still anemic. It's not terrible, but I'm still anemic. So yeah, I've, okay. learned, I've learned to live with this. It's, you know, it's going okay, you know, and the docs are okay with me, and I know I'm in um in uncharted waters, and we'll just just keep an eye on it. This is not, this is not standard of care, but it's okay. Okay, thank you, Peter. Okay, we'll go on. Jeff, Jeff Wood, you're, we missed you last week. Let's catch up. Yeah, maybe, uh, maybe a quick update and then uh, maybe a question. Um, so I've, my PSA has gone from undetectable to 0.03 to 0.05 to 0.07 over the last three tests. Um, did request a germline test, um, waiting for approval from the insurance company. I was kind of shocked. Uh, they were all ready to do it uh, without approval. <laughs> it's like 5,800 bucks. 
uh, for liquid biopsy. Um, so anyway, waiting for that. Um, well, a liquid biopsy wouldn't be a germline test. No. That would be a, a liquid biopsy would be to look for somatic mutations in the tumor. Okay. Yeah. A germline yeah, test would the, come from your saliva. Yeah. Well, it, it could come from your blood too, but it, yes. it shouldn't be anywhere near that expensive for a germline right. test. So, sounds like what they're ordering is a is a somatic test, which is also going to show you show you any germline mutations, yes. but Unfortunately, you're going to have to still do a germline test to know if those mutations are germline or somatic, because they could be either when they show up on a somatic test. But um, uh, the other thing is, well, well, why don't you finish and then we'll come back yeah. to this? Yeah. Because we yeah. can help you with this with this cost on the um, on the somatic test. Yeah. Well, they were pretty sure that the insurance would eventually approve it, but I was like, well, let's let them approve it first rather than put the cart before the horse. Uh -huh. Right. Um, I, I guess my question is um, for the group is, you know, is it a foregone conclusion that if I end up back on ADT, um, that eventually that I'll, I'll become resistant to that and then we're on to second line treatments? There's nobody. There doesn't seem to be any anybody in this group that um, miraculously is held off on the primary. I mean, I don't know. Each person is different, Jeff. But if if you listen to the oncologists talk about it, like if you, if you listen to Alicia Morgan's or other people give webinars, they almost certainly say that everybody eventually converts. It may take a long time, but eventually it happens. I'm still sensitive after eight years. Right. So. I mean, but it, yeah, I mean, if you're hormone sensitive, then that's fine. But, and it, and it could, it, it just, there's a different, everybody has a different time scale. Depends on your Gleason score, too, Jeff. Right. Gleason 7 can probably easily go 10 years, but maybe a little bit less for, for Gleason 8, 9, 10. Before moving on to something else, you mean? Right. Yeah. Right. Before you become hormone resist, castration resistant. Yeah. That's really it. Okay. Tony. Oh, um hold on hold on okay. hold on first of all I want to check if anyone else has questions and secondly I want to come back to Jeff Jeff um there is a trial right now called the promise trial and I'm sure somebody will put the link to it in the in the website whilst I'm talking to you I, I didn't have time to find it before now, this PROMISE trial is for men with prostate cancer, and um, it offers you a free germline test conducted by color. Um, the, it's a very um, reputable trial. It's being run by Heather Cheng um, at University of Washington Seattle Cancer Center. Um, and it is one way for you to get to find your your germline results um, quickly and easily. So um, we're actually working with one of the trial sponsors, a nonprofit. Uh, we are going to run a germline. We're going to run a um, genetic testing webinar later this year. We're just starting to work on it, and we're hoping. Dr. Cheng will be one of the presenters along with somebody from Foundation Medicine to present the somatic. So we can, again, hammer home the differences. Um, but I do strongly recommend um, that you look into the PROMISE trial because that might be a very easy way for you to, um, to figure out your genetic testing. Who, who is, who's running your treatment right now, Jeff? 
uh, Dr. Alter at uh, Hackensack Meridian. Well, I mean, again, you know, I think we've talked about this before, but in your situation, especially where you are right now, I mean, you 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 say you're at 0 0.07, it's creeping up. I I think if it were me, I, I'd get one of the city guys involved, one of the city GU medonks involved. I know Alter is a GU medonk, but I think if it were me, I, I'd be looking to Mount Sinai or to Memorial Sun Kettering, Wild Cornell, Columbia, Presby, mm -hmm. um, just getting them on board since since you have this concern. And Len, thank you. Len's put the trial link for um, for the promised trial in, in there. Actually, that's the clinicaltrials.gov. When I finish talking to you, I'll give you the promised website too. Okay, thank you. Anyone else before we move on to Tony? Yeah, let me, right, let me, okay, let's move on. Tony, tell us what's happening. Uh, well, I know it's been such a long time since I talked to you guys. I mean, um, uh, I mean, just to make it real quick, I mean, I'm just gonna try to start at the beginning. You know, I got, I got diagnosed with prostate cancer stage four in 2018. And, uh, you know, right away, uh, I went on Lupron, and I was getting a shot of Lupron every three months for almost two years. And uh, my PSAs were staying really, really low, really, really low. And then, I mean, the Lupron was just—I couldn't take—I couldn't take the, the side effects. I couldn't take the the tiredness and the—I mean, just the whole the whole thing. Man, I had to—I had to go off of it. So. I went off of the Lupron for, uh, I was off the Lupron for nine months. And then this past December, I went back on the Lupron and um, they did a PSA. And it's the first time that I got an L, well, I, what do I expect? I didn't, you know, I wasn't on the Lupron, but my PSA uh, was elevated to a 0 0.39. 0 .39. So, um, yeah, point three nine, still less than one. Right. But 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 the bottom line is, you know, um, they uh, right away my oncologist put me on Zytiga, so uh, I started I started the Zytiga on um, uh, January twenty fourth, and uh, I've been taking the Zytiga for about a month. In fact, my new supply is coming tomorrow, UPS. And um, by the way, uh, I also, um, I, I, you know, I asked my oncologist for a, uh, to get to get a PSMA test, which I did, and my insurance approved it. And from what from what my from what my oncologist explained to me, and I, I also went to the Cleveland Clinic like last March, just like for a second opinion, of Dr. Iker at the at the Cleveland. Uh, I think it's got a funny name, their cancer center starts with a T. But anyhow, long story short, um, and he told me, he says, Tony, by the looks of your records and everything, your your oncologist has got you on the right path. Just keep doing what he's telling you to do. So he got the results of the PSMA test. And they both told me that the results of the PSMA test were Okay, you know, the cancer's still there. I mean, you know, it's all through my body. I, you know, it metastasized, you know, through all my bones. And they said that uh, the, the cancer is still there that they could see on the screen, but they said that it's hardly growing at all. It's growing at such a slow rate. They, they couldn't believe it. I mean, they, they just, I mean, that's what they said. So, so I asked my oncologist, I said, because uh, he called me too, and he, he kind of seemed like he was happy with the results of the PSMA test. And, and he said, uh, and I said, well, Dr. Ramon, um, you know, because he said the same thing as Dr. Eicher said from Cleveland. He said, it, it, it shows that your cancer, I mean, it's still there in all those different places, but it's growing at a very, very slow rate. I mean, thank God. And then, so I said, um, 
and I don't know, this is a dumb question. Maybe I shouldn't have said this, but I said, so Dr. Ramon, does that mean I'm in remission? And he, and he just said, he says, Tony, with the type of cancer you have, you will never be in remission. And I, I just like to know if anybody wants to comment on that. Like, what, what does that actually mean? You know, when the doctor tells you that. So that, that's, that's where I'm at now. I'm, you know, I'm start, I started the Zytiga for a month. I went back on the Lupron pat this past December. My next Lupron shot is um, uh, March 15th. And, and, and I, I, there was one other question I just wanted to say real quick is I, I, I had heard just from different people that, um, and I don't know if this is a rumor or what, but I heard that a lot of people that once they go off the Lupron, when they go back on, it doesn't work. So I don't know if that's, I don't know if that's anybody, a fallacy or anybody. Or what. I, there, well, we've had people do it. So we, who, who can, who can talk about that? Mm, yes. What, what happens if you go on intermittent, Tony, is that, and this is just with Lupron and with no, secondary but in the past what we've seen is that each time you go back on you get less and less time it doesn't stop working but you might you might um stay on the loop run this time for another year and then you need a break um and instead of getting nine months you might get six months len do you you want to talk about that a little bit yeah, Tony, I've been <clears throat> on uh, intermittent therapy uh, on and off Lupron for a number of times. And uh, it's certainly not true what they told you. Uh, if you were sensitive to the Lupron when you stopped it, uh, when you start taking it again, you'll probably be still be sensitive. That was the case for me. It was the case for Peter, I'm sure. Um, and we're talking about, we're going out now between Peter and I, Peter, eight years, I'm going on eight years in another couple of months. So, um, as far as the remission question goes, Tony, uh, you know, the, you can have a partial remission, you can have a complete remission where complete remission, meaning there's no sign of cancer anywhere, no sign, no symptoms. Mm -hmm. Partial remission could indicate that um, in the case of prostate cancer, let's say you have very low PSA, it's under control and you have no symptoms, that would be considered uh, a partial remission. So, you know, I think what he, what your doctor meant is, that you can't speak of a cure. Maybe he was interpreting your question about remission, meaning am I cured? So uh, there's currently no cure for uh, metastatic prostate cancer, which I had, uh -huh. which you have. There's no cure, but it can be managed. It can be a chronic disease for some number of years. But eventually, um, unless you die of something else, you know, you'll probably die of prostate cancer. Yeah, well, uh, I, I got an I got a, a A1. I went to my cardiologist today, and my heart's in A1 shape. And uh, the only other thing I wanted to say was, um, you know, um, uh, are you guys uh, um, real big uh, uh, proponents of Zytiga? Yes. Uh, Ruteron, take it. Yes. Okay. Okay. Because I started taking that. Uh, well, it's almost a month. Because my ne my next supply will be coming here tomorrow. So I'm gonna. So basically, I'm gonna stay on the Zytiga, and uh, I'm gonna. Well, I already went back on the Lupron, and my next Lupron shot is uh, March 15th. So um, you know, hopefully. I, I just cannot believe, I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know about the, all the gentlemen in the meetings, but I'll tell you what, I got into a severe depression, man, with this. And I, I just, 
I couldn't come out of it, man. It was just, it was pretty unbearable. Tony, I mean, Tony you're yeah. already nearly four years into this journey, right? Yeah, yeah, and there's a and there's a thirty percent so, chance of me surviving five years with this type no, of cancer. No, I think, Tony, you're already four years into this. Your PSA is really low. Your cancer right. is not growing, right? So, what right. does that say? I think I think that's something to be grateful for. Exactly, I mean, and the fact is. You, you know, to think, to set any time scale for when you might have severe problems, you just don't know. We, what we do is we, each of us, as you can hear, do the best we can to follow the, the path that's going to keep us as healthy as we can be and keep this thing in check as much as we can. And you heard people, P Peter, Len are eight years into this, right? Yeah, wow, that's So that's, yeah, that's what gives me hope and I think you should and yes, you it's easy to get depressed. Maybe Dr. John, would you can you make some comments here? John Antonucci, would you be willing to say something? To Tony the, when I uh when I first heard that 30% chance of making it 5 years uh, at the beginning of my journey, I was really upset, and I wish I never heard that because it's a bunch of it's a bunch of bullshit. Uh, I learned I, I could learn that that's a bunch of bullshit just by inventorying the people at this group right now today, Tony. Um, wow. There's people here, many people here, that uh, that are way way beyond that number i don't know where they came up with that number my daughter well, looked, think, my daughter looked me up and came up with that number and got all upset well okay and, let me just say something john with about that that number is in the past yes it is based on data from maybe five years ago before all these new treatments yes and so that you know, is bogus so disregard you know they, that, Tony. You know, when they say five-year survival statistics, if you think that had, was five years ago, it was about five years before that that they got those statistics to release. So that could be science that is like five or ten years at least behind the reality of where we're at today. Six years ago, they told me I had five years. That was six years ago. I'm fine right now. I mean, I'm happy. Right. And I think, Tony, that's what you're going to hear in this group. And you're welcome to continue to, to come and you can listen to us all tell the same story. Oh, so, I remember really so, Tony. I look. Go ahead. It's, uh, it's Tony, a matter this of is Al a chronic Tony. disease. Al. I, uh, I'm, uh, I was told uh, five years, 26 years ago. I'm still counting. So, um, <laughs> cancer, cancer wow. is no longer a death sentence in every case. Right. I thought it was at the time. In 1995, I really did think it was a death sentence, but uh, somehow I'm still here. So, so Tony, wow. I think you should, you really, I mean, I, we've all got this disease, but it's, as Len said, the goal of all of this is to just keep us, Keep it in check and as a, make it a chronic disease. Yeah. Yeah, I understand that. Yeah, that makes sense. And I hope you got some help for your depression. I hope you were able to see somebody who, who gave you some medication or something to, to lift that. Yes? Yeah, yeah and, and what I did is I let myself, I didn't exercise. You know what I mean? I put this weight on and. Oh my gosh, it was ridiculous. I put like 40 pounds on, and, you know, and I kept, and I remember I kept hearing you guys saying, you got to exercise, force yourself to exercise. You have to do that. So that's what I've been trying to do. I, I've been trying, and I tell you what, man, my knees, I don't know if it's the Zytiga, but man, my knees are freaking uh, 
so sore. I mean, I, I do get a shot of Exceva. Every time I get a shot of Lupron, I get a shot of Exceva. But man, I know, right. I don't know, I don't know if it's the Zytiga, but man, my knees are sore as heck, man. I, I, I don't, I don't know. Think, I do what, not think it's the Zytiga. You think it's the Zytiga? I, I do not. I don't. We've not heard of any side effects from Zytiga like that. No, okay. that's well, not strictly true. Is um, it? Uh, no, I mean, if you're if you've been on ADT with secondary, it, for some guys it does cause joint and muscle muscle problems and joint problems, and it is a reported side effect. Um, hmm, not for okay. everybody, but but we've had enough guys that that have have had issues with their joints as as a result of going on hormone therapy. Is there anybody? Anyone else on the call right now who wants to talk about joints and hormone therapy? Pain from joints and hormone therapy? What happened to the 40 pounds, Tony? Did you lose it? Well, slowly but surely I'm losing it. I mean, it, it did, I didn't gain it. I didn't gain it in two days. No, I of, mean, course not. Slowly, of course not. How, how much have you lost them? I've lost about 15 pounds. Wow. I mean, you know, I just I just started walking again because, man, I mean, I I just you know I I just uh, it, man the lethargy, oh my gosh, it's just, you know. But the, but the thing of it is, you know, I I understand that uh, you know that this is a you know this is a journey. I mean, you know, it's not you know, and and I understand that. And and like I said, I just. I just want to be sure that I'm doing the right thing. Well, you know, weight loss can... and exercise yeah. are well correlated with making your journey longer. Right. The extra the extra weight, if you had no prostate cancer and you had no Lupron and no treatments at all, at our age, the extra weight is going to make your knees hurt all by itself. Mm -hmm. so you know what to do. Yeah, there. because... Yeah, because my oncologist, uh, he got me scheduled for a... He wants me to go see a a rheumatologist, he kind of thinks it might be arthritis or rheumatoid arthritis. I mean, you know, because it runs in my family. My mother had it. So uh, well, that, that, that could be. That could it be certainly it. could be. Could be. So look. Does anybody, me, I want to come back to the question I just asked. Does anybody have anything they want to say about joints and and hormone therapy? Yeah, this, this is Brett. I also have joint pain. I have exercise. Uh, five days a week for years and when I went on ADT my knees have been killing me mm. and my muscles get fatigued are sore I'm all the time but my knees are bad right now well what what, what, what do you what, what do you guys mean what do you guys mean by ADT hormone therapy Lupron. you mean like Lupron yes, yes. and and the Zytiga you know, on the on the bottle of my Zytiga, it says chemotherapy. Is Zytiga chemo or a hormone therapy? It is a hormone therapy. It but they right treat it bottle. as a chemotherapy. Oh, I'm sorry. They treat it as a chemotherapy. That's why you have to be go through coaching when you go on Zytigas because they have to treat it as a chemotherapy drug. Yeah, I'm taking a thousand milligrams every every day, two two five hundred right. milligram pills, and then I'm taking the prednisone with it. Right. How much prednisone How much? are you taking? Uh, five Tony. milligrams. Five once milligrams. a day. Yes. Once a day. Yes. Okay. Once a day. Um. So we we've, we've had I don't know if Dennis Korea's on today or not, but we've had guys. Yeah. Who have found that their that taking that prednisone has helped them quite a bit with their joint pain. Dennis, you want to talk about how you become a much better golfer since you started taking the steroids? Yeah, I I don't think I could uh, prove that. Uh, and with the amount of prednisone that I was taking, I don't think it's enough to act like a, a steroid like an athlete would be using to uh, improve their uh, athletic performance. And right now, actually, I'm down to uh, two and a half milligrams per day, prednisone. 
But wow. didn't you tell uh, us at the beginning that when you started taking that prednisone, you had a lot less pain from your joints? Uh, I don't I don't remember, Rick. I, okay. I remember we, we talked a little bit about the golf game and it seemed like the golf game was better. But uh, yeah, I, and I was I taking a higher amount of prednisone at that time. I so, remember because you used to tell us it was a great side effect of the prednisone yeah. that you were in, that you you had less joint pain when you when you started on those steroids. I mean, mm -hmm. my I sense would, is that I wouldn't that, be surprised. At five milligrams, I think five milligrams is awfully low for uh, to to do anything. Those are catabolic steroids anyway, and they're they're not anything like anabolic steroids right. that. That would have any okay. effect on like that. We, we take anabolic steroids, we'll we'll feel great. Well, we'll no, do that shit. no, but they're not catabolic, I mean, but they're, they're glucocorticoids and they reduce inflammation for sure. But, but I think you need different, higher... different than the other kind. So, yeah, hey, I just mean, wanted to ask... don't be a stranger. Come, come back. Yeah, I just, come back I just want to. I just want to ask one more question. What what exactly does anybody know exactly what? Extiva is yes, it's an it's an antibody that promotes bone growth. Okay, okay, because every time I get a shot of Lupron, I get a shot of Extiva. Right, Extiva um, is the appropriate because if you're on ADT, often your bones start to waste, and Extiva yeah. prevents that. Okay. So Tony, keep let me talk, back. Let me talk a little bit about Exchiva for a second, okay? And 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 um, this is also true of Zometa. Um, there is a risk when you take these bone strengtheners. There is a risk of fracture. Now that might seem inconsistent, but in fact, what happens is that the hormone therapy can make your bones a bit like Swiss cheese. And by taking these drugs, either Zometa or Exgiva, they do the same thing, but they work a little differently. They kind of fill in the holes. So what happens is uh. they make your bones denser. They make them denser. They make them more solid. But in doing that, they also make them less flexible and more brittle now my sister um has been on the equivalent of exgiva for years with drugs called fosamax and prolia which are exactly the same um compound as exgiva it's just different dosing different dosing and she stumbled uh. and put and put a hot her her foot down very hard in the summer and she had loads of pain for ages and ages she could <clears throat> she thought it was joint pain it turned out she had a hairline fracture and, oh wow um, it's probable that it's from having been on denosumab which is the what exgiva is called denosumab is the drug for many years and it's a known side effect so you have to you do have to be careful you don't necessarily need it that often they they tend to dose it more than you you get it peter kafka is now getting proleo which is another version of it but he only gets that once every six months and it's a slightly milder dose than the exgiva so um like I say, talk to your docs about how often you need it. Can you get Prolia instead of Exgiva? And there is a risk that um, there is a risk that you might finish up with a fracture. Wow. At the end, do you want to say anything on that or anybody else? There's a couple of other things too. You can get the uh, necrosis of the jaw. There's another yes, risk. Yes. That is, but it's not a very high probability of end count. Mm -hmm. Very low. And uh, the other thing is, I think it's important is the bone density test. Bone density scan checks your level of 
moving from osteopenia to osteoporosis, which is an indication of weaker bones. The bones become a lot more porous. And I do that. I was doing it every two years, and I just started doing it every year. And they could check your fever, which is a common place. Uh, right. To get a fracture in your uh, spinal column, vertebrae. Yeah, yeah I, I can I can tell you guys that I I I was the what led to my diagnosis was a T12 compression fracture, mm. and uh, so I I wound up getting PT prescribed, but I also do. Uh, the week and the my physical therapist you know tells me that all of that um you know tugging on the bones with your tendons uh strengthens your bones and that um I, you know i i i do get pain from the t12 but i can tell you from 40 years of having a desk job and losing all the strength in my legs and in my core that having PT the last two years since I've been diagnosed has just been a godsend for me in terms of getting stronger and feeling better, uh, feeling more positive. Mm -hmm. Yes, I think that's for sure. Carl certainly would say the same thing. He's been having physical therapy lately too, and he tells us that it's good for him. So are there any so, other issues we want? Rick, yeah, you want the, to talk I, more? I'd like to. I like John Ivory has a public service announcement, but he also has a good suggestion for Tony, which is not just for Tony, it's for a lot of guys here. So, Mr. Ivory, would you like to first of all offer your suggestion to Tony and then do our public service announcement? Um, sure. I already put the public service announcement in uh, chat. I'll put it again, but it's just. Uh, on Wednesday night, we'll be doing our 11th Solo Arts Heal, which is a program uh, for people to show how the arts have helped in their healing process. This month, Barbara Discant, uh, whom a few of you may know, her husband, uh, Barry, Barry Miller, used to be a part of this group and she would attend once in a while. That was before my time. But she was a caregiver for him, um, and uh, unfortunately, he passed away in 2020. And she was a caregiver for her daughter, who had leukemia uh, when she was young for two years. So it's going to be a really good show. She's going to play some original songs, and I'll put it in the chat again. But that'll be Wednesday evening, 10:30 uh, Eastern, 7:30 Pacific. And it's also always, if you look at the AnCan site under Solo Arts Heal, all the past shows are there, including our own Jimmy Greenfield here, who has graciously uh, pitched in this month to help with some technical difficulties we're having at the last minute. Uh, the thing for Tony, uh, Ancan also has a group that meets once a month, uh, I believe, called Men Speaking Freely. And it's about, it's, you know, this call is very technical. That call is all about how we emotionally uh, deal with this, this disease. That call isn't taped so we can speak completely freely. It includes all men, whatever um, disease they have, but it might be worth your joining, Tony, because you'll find out that a lot of guys have the same depression and anxiety and uh, feelings that you do, and they might be helpful to you in talking about those. Great. Yeah, that sounds that sounds great. Yeah, Tony, it's yeah, so, on our website, and it meets once a month, right, Pat, John? Yeah, it meets it meets on the third Thursday of every month at the same time and in the same room as this one. The third Thursday of every month, and I have to give two shout outs. The first shout out is to John Ivory, who does a fantastic job producing Solo Arts Heal every month. And we just love him for it. And um, it, it's, been a, it's been a great success and we just hope some of you guys will join. And the second shout out is to Rich Jackson, 
who is the lead moderator for speaking freely. He's the one we usually ask that since John Ivory had the floor and he put it in the window, we went to Mr. Ivory this time around. But yeah. John, but Rich does a fabulous job with speaking freely. Right. Thank you, so, Rich. So, so, and thank you, John. So I'd like, I think we're going to run out of time, so I'd like to move on. Uh, Paul Frieda. Oh, uh, yeah, I have an update. Um, uh, I've been off Lupron for a little more than three years. And um, wow. my recent, yeah, it's very, very good. Uh, my recent PSA, again, is less than 0.04. But my testosterone has uh, dropped from 220 to 180. And I'm experiencing uh, a lot of fatigue. I'll uh, sometimes just, you know, I just feel like I just can't even move. And I just might as well just go to sleep wherever I am. And um, so it's a little annoying, and um, that's what's going on with me. Anybody have uh, their testosterone drop um, uh, when they're when they're off the Lupron? Anybody First thing on the is the holiday well, where their the testosterone thing. didn't hold where they were. Yeah. So the first thing, Paul, is that testosterone is very, very variable, hugely variable. And 180 and 220 are pretty much the same number for testosterone. Really? Um, a, a lot of times it can depend what time of day you test, but there is a great variance. I mean, testosterone can swing in some men 200 points over the course of the day. So um, if you were to speak to an endocrinologist, he'd tell you that's not a huge difference. And it's oh. unlikely that the 220 to 180 is what's causing it. What might be causing it is the fact that that overall level around 200 could be lower. And that is a definitely a function of aging. And there are guys that we know who are in durable remission who um, are, uh, uh, have taken supplements testosterone supplements well i the and idea so, of taking testosterone supplements is like feeding the cancer isn't it yes well it depends it depends on how long you've been in remission and there are guys that are doing it and there are some doctors that will work with it and and you know herb quickly says yes but for men who are uh, who have your type of disease which isn't clearly metastatic it might have been micro metastatic um it, it it may it may be an option and you have to get together with your urologist and discuss it okay right I... and i don't know are, are there any guys on this call who have tried supplementing their testosterone we've had guys on the call definitely in the past anybody in this group tonight who's who's done that i supplemented so, with hcg to bring it back but my question for paul is how were you feeling when you were fully suppressed when you were on adt originally and it was you know presumably well below 50 or 20 or whatever um uh, well, I, I I didn't feel the fatigue that I felt I have felt recently, but I but I did feel I did feel fatigue, you know, um, during the years that I um, was on was on the Lupron, uh, but it it never seemed like a, and it was never like a major issue. It was you know you have you have the, the variety of side effects. You know, I I grew breasts and I, I gained weight and I had hot flashes. I still keep a, a fan remote controlled fan by my bed. And uh, sometimes at night I feel hot, and um, but um, so it, it didn't stick out as something that I had to worry about. But le recently I've um, experienced uh, a lot more of um, uh, fatigue than than I ever remember, and uh, the, the low testosterone would explain it. Well, it might explain it, except when was that last you, time had you had a complete workup. When was the last time you had a complete blood workup? Well, I just, I just, I just, you know, I just got my recent blood work. Everything is fine. My doctor said to me, if I gave your blood work to ten doctors, uh, none of them would be able to tell what, how old you are. Why don't you get a complete testosterone? Of a thirty-year-old, he said. Paul, 
complete testosterone workup might be helpful because it's going to tell you what your free testosterone is and your sex hormone binding globulin. Those are important numbers that you only get with a complete testosterone workup, which most guys don't even know anything about. But it could be helpful. I've never heard of that, a complete testosterone Ask, workup. Yeah, because you've got more than just total testosterone as a, as a consideration. Ask a, a, a urologist if you find a good one about that because uh, that's what I did when I was my testosterone was coming back. The, the total number is not the only number that matters. Okay, thank you very much. Sure. And, and Jimmy, do, do you want to say anything about how testosterone varies? You probably know a lot more about that than I do. It, it of course, I mean, it, 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 mine came back uh, kind of slowly, but then it came back with kind of a bang after about eight months of being off of uh, Elgard Lupron. But it, it was, uh, it, you know, it, it, was, it was 350 and that was nice. And then it was 750, and that was great. And then it bounced back to 500. And then it was 400. It stabilized at about 500. But I can't say stabilized because it has varied as much as a couple of hundred, uh, right? You know, every time. So um, the main thing for me is that I felt just as good at 300 as I did at 700. What I didn't feel good at was 117 and you know 35 and that. So for me, it was very clear that there was a level that once I reached, that I was feeling pretty well. But I exercise a tremendous amount, and I do. I must admit that I think that's always made a difference. How old are you, Jimmy? I'm a robust 66. 66. Wow. I get to collect Social Security starting this year. <laughs> okay. Any other questions about testosterone? Okay. If not, uh, let's let's hear from uh, David Muslin. Okay, just a quick update. So, um, so I got off abiraterone in uh, September of last year, and I stopped. And I didn't take my renew. I didn't take my Lupron shot that I was supposed to take. Twelve fifteen. I was on ADT for twenty four months, um, and right now I'm just waiting for my testosterone to start to rise to get on uh, darolutamide. But I, my. Uh, it's not coming up yet. I understand everybody says it takes six to Jimmy took took Jimmy eight months. So I'm feeling pretty good. It's nice to be off the drugs and um, just waiting for the testosterone to rise to get on darolutamide. And the other interesting thing is, you know, I was getting my uh, my blood check at Northwestern in Chicago, and it was always came back at 0.1 for the for the uh, um, <laughs> for the P P PSA, and when I'm getting it checked down here, the first one came back at 0 0.05. I'm doing this monthly, and then the uh, the, the last one before that was 0 0.04. So I think that's still pretty undetectable. Don't you agree? Right. It's yeah. cl they're all the same. They're you're at a really right. low level. Right. So I'm just hanging by and uh, and waiting. That's my big update. Well, let's see what happens. Let's hope it okay. continues. And and by the way, on, on uh, what um, Shmulewitz says, the average for becoming prostate, for becoming castrate resistant is about three years, and it can vary. So he says, but the average is about three years, or whatever that's worth. Okay. Okay, right. thanks. Thanks, sir. Okay. So, Al, you had an update too, right? I think he gave it to us. Um, I pretty much gave okay. it. I pretty much gave it before okay. when we were talking about uh, LU 177. I don't really have anything okay. else to add. Okay. Well, is, did I miss anybody? I don't think so. So, I think we we're, we're done for the night. So I'm going to get on a Zoom uh, call now with Barbara and help her with her tech support. So if you see the solo RTO performance by Barbara and you don't like the sound, you come to me. Okay, we will definitely <laughs> go after you, Jimmy. I'm I'm going to see I, if we Thanks, come Jimmy. to you, come Jimmy, to Jimmy, if we yeah. come to you, what level of testosterone will we find? You'll know by my, by my mood. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you all, Hello. guys. Hold right. on, David. No you guys are in.
Good night. You're in such a rush. I just want to say on record that we should give Herb a prize because I can't remember the last time we finished and got through everybody when it was just two minutes after the hour. <laughs> so that deserves a round of applause for Herb for tonight. Look, I mean, look at these screens. Everybody's, everybody's clapping. Yeah, right. um, and I did, I did yeah, want to check. Is, um, it's on me. It's Phil, not on me. It's have, Phil, did you have something to say? No, I apologize. Sorry. I, I did want to check because there are a couple of people we checked in with at the beginning and they didn't respond. And I just wanted to make sure that there's nobody here that still wanted to, to say anything before we, uh, I, I know asked. Herb did ask. I heard, yeah, I just want to make sure. I know some people are a little shy to to speak up, but don't be shy. If you've got something on your mind, now is the time to, uh, you know, to I say think something. Everybody here I checked in with, so I think we're good. Okay. Sounds okay. good to me. Good night, all. Great meeting, Herb. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Great job, Herb. Great job.